First, a warm welcome to this uh, WeGate workshop on investment readiness for women-led startups. My name is Claire Monk. I am the CEO of an angel group based in Belgium called Be Angels. A couple of years ago, with the, the support of Florence and Femme Business Angels, we set up the Women Business Angels Club in Belgium as well. And I'm a board member of uh, Business Angels Europe. Today, I'm delighted to welcome Florence Richardson uh, to talk about investment readiness. Florence, hello, good afternoon. Um, to, to start off, would you mind introducing yourself? I know you have a very rich experience as entrepreneur, investor, and then maybe your role in uh, Fan Business Angels. Okay, hello, Claire. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. I'm very happy to be uh, sharing this hour with you today uh, and talk about investment readiness for women-led startups. So I'm Florence Richardson. I'm uh, the president of uh, BA Angel Club, which is called Femme Business Angels in France. Um, I joined Femme Business Angels about 10 years ago. And before that, I uh, worked for 15 years in a bank and then I started uh, my own company. I co-founded a company uh, in Salesforce organization and outsourcing, uh, which company I developed for about eight years, a little bit more, and I sold my shares. And for the last 10 years, I've pretty much been uh, an investor, uh, not full-time, but almost, um, uh, either through business, uh, fan business angels or other ways. I've made uh, about 30 investments in startups. Uh, I'm part of quite a few uh, strategic committees or board. I'm also a board member of a financial institution as well as a small listed company. Uh, and uh, most of my time I spend meeting entrepreneurs, women or men, uh, and uh, looking at uh, startups investment possibilities. A word, quick word about Fan Business Angel. So we are uh, only women uh, business angel network. We are based in, in France and we gather about 150 women investors. We invest in uh, all kinds of startups and whether uh, led by men or women or both. Um, but in 2019, half 50% uh, of our, our investments were directed toward women led startups. So even if this is not a criteria for investment, it definitely helps to have women investors in front of women uh, uh, entrepreneurs. Thank you, Florence. Um, just a, a word of, uh, uh, in terms of the organization. So as Marisa put in the chat, we're going to record this session. Um, if you have questions, what I suggest is that you use the chat uh, to ask questions as they come to you so that uh, we can actually pick them up during the Q&A session. Uh, so feel free to, to use the chat whenever you want. Just make sure that your mic is off um, and if we're still in, in a small group, we can keep the videos. It's, it's quite nice. Um, so thank you, Florence. Just before you actually dive into your presentation, because I think you have prepared a few slides uh, concerning this topic of investment readiness. Uh, the issue is always that uh, for entrepreneurs, you know, it's quite hard to identify investors, uh, find investors. And when you talk to investors, they say, well, uh, you know, there's not enough projects out there. Uh, but not only that, um, we think that uh, it also, it's also a hurdle for entrepreneurs to actually uh, become investment ready. So this is what we're going to talk uh, about this afternoon, being investment ready. So being ready to meet investors and specifically, what does it mean for women-led startups uh, in particular? So Florence, uh, may I suggest that you dive into your presentations and their participants don't hesitate to use the chat if you have any questions along the way. Okay, thank you very much. So thank you, Claire. So I'll start with figures and I know you probably know, know them all, but I think it's good to remind, to remind uh, you that a very small percentage of venture funds, they go to teams with at least one female founder. And that's pretty much the case in every country, all throughout, uh, whether in the States or in, New York, in Europe. The second fact is that ticket size per startup funded or co-funded by women are overall half of the size of uh, tickets invested in men-funded startup. And this is getting worse as ones go on, series A, B, or C. 
and that's not right because, however, women-led companies, they outperform the market in terms of revenues. And uh, there have been several very interesting studies which uh, demonstrated this point, which is a key point. And uh, finally, uh, and finally, VCs are uh, and founders are starting to realize that they are missing opportunities. So as a women fa uh, founder, we need to be aware that the, uh, the, the, the ecosystem of funding is starting to realize that this is a, this is a very important uh, point. Um, why is this disparity? Why so little funds invested in women-led uh, startup? First of all, uh, and that's a point everybody knows as well, uh, there's not as many uh, women-led companies founded by women than, than, than men. Uh, and it is particularly true in the technology sector. The second point, which is very important, and I know it because I'm a female investor, is that there is an overwhelming majority of male uh, decision makers in the funds industry. So most of the time, women entrepreneurs, they are in front of male uh, investors. And basically what happens, they're subject to bias or some challenges and stereotypes, and it's still true, less and less, but it's still true, and we may, we may come back on that later. Uh, another point is that women, it's true, are generally pretty conservative when they, uh, it comes to their projection, and they ask for less funding than men on a general basis. And the last point is that uh, sometimes uh, women services or, or I mean, women let start to offer services or products which are oriented towards, towards women or uh, female in uh, customers because they had an idea because they were lacking of something or they needed a certain service. So they created something that they, was, they found useful for themselves. And because in front of them, they're mostly male investors, they are not convinced or they don't understand the product or, and they consider most of the time services are lower return investments. So all these big facts, they explain why the disparity, but uh, it doesn't mean that we can't do anything about it. So getting into the, the subject, raising gross capital, it's a challenge and it's a challenge for every founder, whether you're a woman or whether you are a man, it's, it's always a challenge. It's a challenge because it is a strategic decision uh, it's, it's probably one of the key strategic decisions you'll have to make uh, for the first years of your company. Uh, what type of funding, uh, what type of mix of funding? Do I look for debt? Do I look for equity? It always, uh, obviously it will depend on the stage of the development of your company. What amount of funding uh, do I need and to, to do what? Uh, most of the time, what we say is, for example, uh, the advice is that the amount of funding will cover about 50, uh, 18 to 40 to 24 months uh, of uh, to keep the business going and growing. So you need to uh, secure enough funding for the next 18 to four, 24 months and uh, to work for what project? Well, that's important when you raise capital, especially uh, the capital uh, raise at this stage when you start a company is uh, to mainly towards product development and market development. It's not for management or, or, uh, or overheads or what's important is product and sales. So that's what the, the project should be. And which funders are most appropriate for the capital needed? I'm, I, I will not cover all kinds of funders because my activity is more into, in, um, with uh, equity funding. So this is mainly what I will talk, talk about uh, today. But we can't forget that you can also raise debt. And that's obviously debt is more um, for companies which are already revenue generating and profitable, or at least they come along with equity. So I will mostly focus on uh, equity. So which founders are the most appropriate? I'll come back uh, on, the list, on the next uh, slide on that point. What is my negotiation margin as well? It's very important to know, uh, you know whether my uh, offer globally as, a, as a, uh, my operation is interesting for the, for the investors. One other thing we, which is very important when you start to raise capital is it's very time consuming. And uh, while you do that, you don't do anything else. You, are, you, do, you do a lot less of, uh, you can't focus on sales, you can't focus on, to, on growing your business. So this is why 
investment readiness is really crucial so that it takes as little time as possible and it's as efficient as possible. And also because being ready means you increase your chances of being funding. And don't forget, this is probably one of the most important sales you'll ever make at this stage of your uh, company. A quick word on the, uh, something you probably all know, but it's very uh, it's important to remind that where the kind of funders or investors you will go see obviously depends on the stage of your company. If you're uh, just starting up, then you probably the first uh, amount of money, uh, let's say 100, oops, uh, below 100K, you'll find with friends, family, we call it 3F, friends, family, and fools, uh, and, you, and, and probably your own money. Uh, second stage of investment of funding will be you know, between 100 and uh, uh, a million euros. And then that's where you you're going to start looking for the first time for external capital, seed capital with angels, angel investors, or crowdfunding or seed funds. And so if you're at that stage, you, you're not, usually you have a product, you have an MVP, you have a product, you start to have some traction, uh, but you're not uh, at the break even point. And you need between 100 and 1 million. That's where you go uh, see these kind of investors, angel crowdfunding seed funds. And then when you start growing and you need more capital to uh, go to the next step of uh, your development of your company, that's where you go see VCs, uh, early stage VCs to start to raise the first round or the second round of two to three million or five to 10 million and go on. Uh, and then go on. So I'll investment readiness is i will obviously talk more about angel investors or seed funds but pretty much it's the same at every stage you need to be investment ready uh, and what i will say about angel investors or seed funds will probably is exactly the same uh, the later you go except you need to be even more prepared for the next steps so what do you need when you You've decided that it's the right time. You uh, you know how much money you need. You know what it is for. You know what uh, uh, you have decided. Which kind of investors you may target. Then what do you need before you start? You need an exact summary. So it's uh, like an investment teaser. It's really one minute of I read a page and uh, this triggers my my attention, and so it gives you the opportunity to pitch. As a, as an investor. I read, I, we receive uh, six, seven, eight hundred uh, pitches every every year, probably more. So obviously the first uh, minute is really important because I don't have time to spend so much time on every uh, on every pitch. So the investment teaser is very important, trigger the attention. Then you, are, you need an investor presentation. It's a deck, what we call a deck. It's for face-to-face -face presentation. Obviously, right now, it's more virtual presentation. And in 10 to 12 slides, you need to give the essential information and put aside in annexes, uh, not essential information, but you may refer to uh, when specific questions happen. Uh, for further stages of investment, like series A, B, C, you probably will need a full memorandum of investment uh, describing in full details uh, everything about your, your company. At this stage uh, of angel investors or even seed investment, uh, usually we don't have a very, very full detailed memorandum of, uh, for investment. You are, obviously you need financial forecasts uh, and uh, usually on a three to five years basis. Uh, what's really important is to be able to um, uh, detail your forecast and explain what's in it. I'll come back on that. Uh, and, uh, and it's very important, uh, especially when face-to-face uh, -face meetings do not happen, like now, uh, it's very important to add some interactivity in your presentation. So maybe you can have a, a slide, but you can have a small video in it, or you can have something that's a bit different that attracts the, the attention of the uh, of the investors. So you're ready. You have everything ready. You have your exec summary, you have your deck, you have your financials, you've reviewed all that. What do you need in 
all these documents and when you get actually uh, to, uh, an interview or when you get to pitch with uh, investors what do you need you need to be prepared to answer to all the questions that uh, potential investors will most likely ask you so basically what is the problem that you are solving uh, in uh, in with your uh, with your offer and in front of this problem what is your solution so then what is the market opportunity that you are addressing and where is the competition what are the entry barriers uh, on this market why is my business model convincing and mostly and that really is the most important part is it the right team to lead and to grow the venture and you have to remember that at this stage investor they will focus on the team 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 everything else is important but what's most important than everything else is the team. Uh, how ambitious are you? How coherent are your financials perspective? Coherence is very important. And at the end of the day, I'm an investor. Is this operation attractive or not? Uh, with all these questions, at the end of your presentation, uh, do I think, okay, this is definitely something I want to look into? Or, well, no, I'm not convinced by the team or am I not convinced by the business model or by uh, the valuation, everything else. So you have in your papers, in your deck, in your exec summary, summarize all these key points and you get an opportunity to pitch because, uh, okay, I've, I've received your, your exec summary. I've looked at it. I thought, okay, this, this is worth digging into. This is really worth meeting the people uh, behind this uh, project. So you get the opportunity to pitch. A pitch is usually, uh, let's say five to 10 minutes. Sometimes it's shorter, two minutes, but that's really, really short. Sometimes it could be longer, up to 20 minutes, but the average that I know is around 10 minutes of pitching. And when you pitch, you need to be able to address every important question, but even though you need to address them all, you need to, prior start, uh, to to focus on what's really important for the investor at this stage. And what is really important, I think, for the investors when we start, uh, 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 when we're discovering a, a, a project is the team. I've already said that. It's the market potential and it's the pertinence of the service or the product on this market. Everything else is important financial, valuation, whatever. But I th to me, I think this is really important to focus on these three points because they are, they are the points which will uh, make that your case will go on the right side or on the wrong side. If I'm not convinced by the teams, even if your financials are uh, e extraordinary, I won't probably won't go any further. If I don't think there is a market potential, I probably will hesitate a lot. So. These are, to me, the very important uh, key factors. On the team, uh, what's really important when we look at the team for uh, uh, entrepreneur? I think we, we look at business competence. Uh, technical competencies, all this is very important, but business competence to start a company is really key because if you can't sell your product, you might have the greatest product of the world. If you can't sell it, you won't make any any turnover and you you won't go any uh, very far so business competence strong leadership and readiness because readiness is all this is is to actually show that you really possess your project you really uh, you're ready you're ready to go in the market and you're ready to make a killing if you don't pitch well if you don't give a great impression it's very unlikely that you go any further and that you will uh, obtain funding so um, do's and don'ts. I'll start with a few don'ts. Um, and they're actually valid for every entrepreneur. Uh, sometimes I see pitches where there's a lot of focus on the product, on the pro problem it's that the product is solving. Uh, and, and between for ten, for you know, in 10 minutes of pitching, I will hear five or six minutes, half, more than half of the time, on how wonderful the product is. Okay, that's great, but it's insufficient because you need to emphasize not on the product, but on what it brings to your customer and why, why is it different? Why will it uh, uh, revolutionate the, the market and, and, 
And that's important to know more than why the product is great. There's so many great products which just never did anything because there was nobody, there were nobody to buy them. Uh, another thing that I see quite a lot is a poor evaluation of the competition. It's very important to, to show that you know your environment and your market. Uh, if, for example, I see some project where this is no competition. It's not true, there's never no competition. It might be not direct, in, it might be an indirect competition, but there's always a competition. And if you don't actually address it, it shows that in, in the investors, you really don't possess well your market. There's sometimes poorly presented project, less and less. Now, uh, uh, usually all the projects we get are pretty well presented. Uh, what's important also is the coherence of the business plan and financial projections. Uh, not just the coherence, but also the fact that you are able to clearly explain everything under it. Uh, I see sometimes a business plan which have been uh, made by external uh, counsels like accountants, but they are not the people that will actually deliver. So uh, you can get help to make a coherent and uh, uh, ambitious uh, business plan and or to help for your financial projections, obviously, but you need to actually totally possess uh, and, and you need to be able to explain everything, all the hypotheses, because this is your project. It's not your accountant project, or it's not uh, your uh, the person that that is helping you to raise fund project. It's yours. So if you don't possess your business plan and you don't explain everything and you're not able to answer every question on it, it's not a good sign for investors. Eccentric valuation, obviously, uh, it's something that we see quite a lot. Uh, it's good to be uh, starting at a certain point of negotiation in able to have some margin for maneuver. But if you're we are pretty well aware of the company's valuation in their field. So if you come with an external valuation and say, okay, this is my company, it's worth 8 million when we think it's probably more than two, it won't give much, it's not reasonable and it probably will stop the conversation right there. And another thing that is very important is to identify when you see investors exit prospect because we're not there to stay with you for the whole your whole entire life we're there for a few years so we need to know and we need to see what the prospects for exit are right now and not in five years now do's as a woman entrepreneur uh, i we have to face uh, probably more challenges than men um, and so what do you need to do to uh, face these challenges? First of all, it's true, it's, it's right for everybody, but it's very important to go to the essential, to be short, to be direct, and to be clear. Uh, one issue for women pitching sometimes is that uh, our voices are, are not as, uh, as low as men's voices, or we are not as present on the, uh, on the stage or in front of the camera. So when you're short, when you're direct, when you're clear, you actually, uh, you, you, you're more targeted uh, and, and you have a, more of an impact on, your, uh, on the people in front of you. You need to position yourself. There again, as a woman, unfortunately, uh, leadership uh, is not always associated with a uh, woman entrepreneur. So we need to, to be there and show that you have the leadership uh, that uh, investors are waiting for, are ex expected from uh, entrepreneur. You need to show that you have a strategic vision, uh, that you, you, you can think uh, about what you will be doing in the next six months, but also what will happen in the next five years. That's very important. And you also need to show that you have business competencies and that you will be able to uh, take your company to the level of sales that you are uh, uh, projecting. You need to emphasize the positive and focus on development of the company and not the risk management. One of the issues that have been shown by um, quite a few uh, researchers is that uh, investors, men investors, when they ask a woman uh, about a woman entrepreneur about uh, ask questions, they ask more questions about risk management than growth of the company. So you need to inverse that, that, that posture and you need to focus yourself on where you want to go, how you want to go there and how ambitious you are 
and not just on how you will manage the risk because it's it's uh, it definitely puts uh, a different perspective on the project you also need to listen to the investors position that's important but because sometimes uh, women are more challenged than men in terms of criticism or negative comments it's important to say that you disagree you have the right to be very politely disagreeing with the people you have in front of you and explain clearly why. Your goal is to convince your investor, it's not to listen to, uh, you know, that why he doesn't agree with you. It's important to take his comments, but it's also important to stay, uh, um, uh, to, to defend your project and to disagree with your investors. So it's, it's really your conviction, your conviction, your dynamism, dynamism that will, help you to, to, to show that you have the best project and you will push your investors to move forward with, with you. Uh, do the game. Am I, am I right on the time? Yes, you can go, Florence, Florence, okay. that's fine, yes. Um, do the game. Because we are women, uh, I think sometimes we are expecting expected to have women postures. Uh, and if we don't, it's not right. And if we do, it's not right. I may come back on that later. So I think the most important thing is to be natural, to be authentic, to be yourself and to show your pa passion, your ambition, but not to try to be somebody else than you are because at the end of the day, you are who you are. And that's what's important for the investors to know as well. It's not to think you're somebody else. So being natural and authentic is probably one of the key thing when you pitch. Um, we see as much, uh, I, I don't know how many pitches I've seen in my life, but I've, been, I've seen so many that I must say sometimes it gets a bit repetitive and boring. So what's really important is that uh, when you pitch, you, you vary the emotion, you use your emotions, you vary your emotions so that the people in front of you that keep, they, they, are, they, they want to keep listening to you. Uh, so it's very important that you don't keep a cold, monotonous uh, text uh, way of saying it, because if you do, you even in 10 minutes, you might lose your investor. So it's important that you, you really uh, into your pitch and you vary emotions and you make it go through. Uh, you need to adapt your attitude to your audience. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to do when uh, we are pitching in front of a computer like I'm doing right now. Uh, so because I can't see I can't see you. I'm only seeing my computer and my uh, uh, and my screen. So that's very frustrating. But it's very important to keep in mind that if you have the chance to see your audience, uh, you will see that sometimes you might say things that are uh, understood, not understood, or the, the or surprise the people or not. So it's very important that you, you pay a, a real attention to your audience, even though, as I said, it's very complicated right now. Uh, don't forget to breathe. It's uh, it's important. I've seen pitches when people stop; they, they just can't breathe anymore because they are, they, they, it's important to take the time to breathe uh, so that you know you you stay calm and and you dominate your emotion. Um, and I think and that's important. I think it's important to smile to smile before you pitch so that it puts you in a rest you and also to smile during your pitch. So. But what's really important is practice. Uh, pitching is a difficult exercise. It's, uh, it's complicated. So you need to practice again, again, and again. And then afterwards, when you go into the process, you need to create trust and desire because uh, investing in a company before everything, it's a question of trust and it's a question of desire to be part of an adventure. And what you want to create to your, with your investors is that you want, it, it, it's a question of figures, it's a question of markets, it's a question of products, it's a question of all of that, but it's a question of men and women uh, talking to each other. And if you don't create trust, and if you don't create desire, if you don't feel, if you don't, it, it's not going to work. I don't think I've ever invested in a company where I thought, wow, the product is great, the market seems right, but really I don't like the guy or I don't like the woman. I've never done that. So maybe at a later stage, I, I, the, the emotions and the, and the people in, uh, are, are less important. I don't know. But as 
uh, as, as the seed, for seed investment, I think it's very important that uh, this trust and desire is, uh, is there. As a conclusion, I would say that uh, to summarize, raising fund, it's really important because it takes time. It takes a lot of energy. You put everything else on hold. So especially your commercial activity. So you need to be ready to make it work as well as possible. You can't wait to be short of cash. You really need to give yourself enough time. If you come and see investors and you, you, you just have another two months of cash, uh, you're positioning yourself in a very bad state because you can't, you don't have any time to negotiate. And, and, and so you won't be negotiating a, a good operation. So give yourself enough time, six months minimum is important. Uh, you, as we said, preparing is really a key because preparing means you will come to investor with a coherent and acceptable package. And when I say package, it's everything. In the package, you have, as I said, the team, the, 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 the market, the product, the, 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 the ecosystem, uh, your business plan, your, ambitious, your ambitions, your valuation, everything. And that needs to be coherent. And the exit possibilities as well. And all that needs to be coherent. And that's very important that it is. Um, another thing that's really important is it's, it's a time consuming process and you might be able to see different kinds of investors, BA networks, seed funds, crowdfunding, VCs, etc., uh, and have a co-investment between them. So what you need to do is to coordinate all the stakeholders, because if you let one take too much time and then the other one, you, you will waste your time and energy and you can't do that. So you need to accelerate the process. You need to coordinate them. And you need not to forget that at the same time, you are in competition with other projects. So if you don't go quick enough, uh, you know, as investors, we see many projects every day or every week or every month. And if one is taking too long, well, well we might jump into another one and, and then forget about you. So it's important. And as I already said, create trust in investors. But my conclusion is that I think the timing is really right for women. As I say, to start with, there's been this real uh, realization that these figures of 2% of funds in women-led companies is just not right. It's not right because it, it's not right to have 30% uh, of women entrepreneurs raising 2% funds, literally. But it's also not right because Women in uh, led startup are very, are actually profitable uh, and and good investments. So it's the right time for women to find uh, investors. Uh, so you should go for it. Thank you so much. And that's, that's it. Thank you so much, Florence, for your presentation. Can I suggest that you maybe uh, stop presenting so that we can see you in the in the big screen and so that you can see the participants as well, which that's is. It which is better. Um, okay, we've started having a few questions in the chat, but maybe one is about um, the motivation of the different investors. So here you presented a lot of sort of tips and tricks about presenting to angel investors, but also at the beginning you mentioned this is about angel investors and venture capital funding. Uh, and if you were to present to a bank, you would probably, you know, you would probably emphasize something different because you would have a refunding capacity, etc. Can you maybe tell us a little bit about uh, the motivation of business angels to invest? And it goes back to a question we've had in the chat about do you do only local investments, for example, in France, or could you do, for example, investments in Bulgaria? And I think that will go back to the to the motivation piece. Okay. Uh, the motivation for of business angels and mainly women business angels, or oh, I know a lot of men business angels, but uh, my network is, is female, uh, is there are different motivations. I think one of the main motivation is that uh, most of the women angels that I know, they want to participate in the economy and directly. They don't want to, in, to put their money only in directly in funds they don't know where the money is going to or what it is it will be used to. they want to know that their money is actually useful and they can be part of it it's almost being uh, entrepreneur you know indirectly entrepreneur and i think that's a real uh, motivation this direct uh, in investment in a company uh, because investment is just not the only thing we do once we invested 
one of the keys that we actually there to help uh, the, the, the company by bringing more than just money. Uh, we are usually, as I said, I'm part of quite a few uh, boards. We're usually a member of the board of the company where, that we invested in. Uh, and, and we try to bring, and we do bring a lot to companies that we are actually uh, helping and not just the money, as I said. So I think that's what the, that's probably the key uh, factor of why do we uh, business angel invest in, in, in startup companies. Now we know it's very risky. So obviously, and we said that to all our investors, do not put all of your money in there, just a very small percentage because it's a very risky uh, investment, but it's probably the most exciting one as well. So, And so with your members, Florence, do you invest only in France or would you be looking at deals outside of France? We invest pretty much uh, only in France. Uh, and the reason is... Uh, it's, I've been trying to look at deals outside in France, of France, and honestly, it's complicated. It's already very complicated to invest in a company where you know the environment, the language, the, the legal system, the market and everything. Uh, it's, you add up some complexity if you go outside of your sphere, sphere, on, sphere of knowledge. So uh, some people do invest of, uh, in other countries, but I think the majority of us, they, they, they invest locally in France, France or, or maybe out, just outside, but usually it's, it's more local, local. So I think for entrepreneurs looking for investors, uh, probably resources like Business Angels Europe or the Global Business Angel Network to try to identify uh, organizations that are active in their own country would be good as a, as a starting point because I go back to this motivation of wanting to, to make an impact. So it's true that the majority of angel investors will be local investors and that some angel investors will invest cross border. And, um, and I think uh, that, you know, we, we will have the opportunity to talk about that in, in other workshops. Another mm -hmm. question, Florence, what is your advice for a founder wanting to stay top of mind, but without being too pushy? What is my advice? Top of mind, but not. So you want to, yes, you want to, you want to remain relevant. So you want people mm. to, to remember you, but you don't want to be too pushy about it. So what, what could be a good strategy or advice? Well, I think, uh, I think the key point is, as I said before, I think is to be yourself. If your uh, natural way of being is to be pushy uh, and it's natural, then you should be pushy because that's the way you are and people will appreciate that you are pushy. Uh, if, you're, if you're not pushy naturally and if you try to put yourself in a, uh, I need to be assertive, I need to, uh, then it's true that it's, it's, if it's not natural, it's not uh, easy to do. So I would say that I, I've seen some very different women, I mean, many women uh, pitching and some of them are very pushy and you can feel it. It's in their genes, they're the way they are, and it's, it's right. And that's how we see them. And some of them are a lot uh, more discreet, but they're very pertinent. They say the exact things and they answer to all the questions very clearly. And they're fine too. So uh, to me, it's really a question of being yourself and yourself uh, knowing your stuff. And then you can know it and be pertinent without being pushy. Or if you need to be pushy because that's in your character, then you need to be pushy. <laughs> okay. So be, be yourself. Um, when we were preparing this session, Florence, and, and we know each other quite well as well, but you, you mentioned, you know, diversity being key to what you do and what Femme Business Angel does as well. So you are women only angel investor group, but you invest in, uh, in great teams, basically. Can exactly. you tell us more about this diversity angle? And also we have a question about, do you actually lean into the diversity in startup teams? You know, do you have a role maybe in trying to encourage diversity in startup teams? Um, yeah, we are a female business engine network, not just because we want to be uh, between, just between women, that's not, that's not the case. The case is when this, uh, business engine network was created in 2003 there was pretty much no business angel or women business angel so uh, there was a way to start a, a place where women could feel okay i feel comfortable because i'm not just one woman within 150 men and i can i can talk without being looked at and, and that's what happens but uh, the key 
and and I think this is something I, I'm very strongly uh, convinced, but I'm not the only one. The key is not being just a female business angel, or it's it's the it's the mix, it's mixity, it's diversity. I think the best teams are the ones, and that's when I look at a team for for a funding team, that's how I look at it. Are the one which gather uh, competencies, but also difference of gender, age, uh, origins. All this is very important because this is how the, the, the team will be the best. To uh, if I see a team of three men, all uh, engineers, and uh, and they have developed a great product, I probably will have some questions about their ability to uh, how will they go to the market. For example, if I see a team of uh, 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 which you know adds up with uh, business, techno technology, management, finance, uh, uh, everything. And there's a man, and there's a woman, and there's a young girl, and there's a. Then I, I I can feel that probably this team goes well together. This diversity will be very positive for the company. Uh, it's not just obviously my opinion. Uh, there's been some very serious uh, studying uh, showing that diversity, mixity. Uh, is a real key success factor for companies. So I'm really convinced of that. And uh, that's important. Um, I, I think we have obviously entrepreneurs, investors um, on, on this workshop, but we might also have people from uh, organizations, maybe people who want to set up an angel group. Um, Florence, can you tell us as Femme Business Angels, what do you do to help entrepreneurs become investment ready? Or what could you recommend to people who actually have organizations? How do you do it? When is the right time to do it? What's the format? As an investor group, it is not really our role to help uh, uh, entrepreneurs to get investment ready. Obviously, if they come to us and they pitch, we'll always tell them, well, you need to work on this, or you, this was good, but this wasn't. And we all we give them some feedback on uh, what, what we see in their, uh, in their pitch, in their deck, and how it works. I very often have uh, people calling me and say, okay, I'm, I want to pitch, but I'm not really ready. Can you help me? And, and I, can, I try to do it, but I can't do it for everybody. And it's just too time consuming. And I've got already uh, a lot to do with uh, fan business angels. I think there's a lot of um, uh, institutions which are there to help uh, and company women in their uh, investment readiness. I'm talking about accelerators, incubators. They really know how to, to make it to work. We uh, very often, we go there and we actually give speeches and explain uh, our point of views in terms of investors, what we expect, what we wait for. So we go there and we meet uh, the incubators, the accelerators and, and the entrepreneur, and we tell them. But I think it's more incubators, accelerators, all these structures to which accompany uh, entrepreneurs to, to, to actually make sure that they're investment ready. And they, and they do a pretty good job, I must say. Most of the most of the people we meet, when they've gone through this uh, kind of uh, structures, they are, they are ready, they're pretty well ready. Yeah, so I think it's an important um, point you're making, Florence, that as angel groups, it's not necessarily our role to uh, deliver this type of workshop. I think it's the same in, in Belgium with my group. Uh, Anne and Mary, who are in the chat, are also suggesting that they, they have resources and they actually do carry out investment readiness uh, workshops for women entrepreneurs. So thank you very much to, to, to you for posting that. Uh, but indeed, an angel group, you know, should see the projects when they are investment ready, because if they're not investment ready, then, you know, it's, it's, it's too early to pitch or present anything as a, as a business opportunity. Uh, I have it's a difficult to have sorry. several chances, sorry, Claire. Once you've done, you know, once you've gone through different investors uh, or angels group and you've pitches and it doesn't work, you can't come back one month later and say, okay, now I'm ready. Uh, it, it just doesn't work. You may come back uh, six or eight or 12 months later, but you've lost your time. You can't come back twice. And so you really need to be ready when you come and, and see angel groups. Yes. Absolutely. So I have a tough question, Florence, and we have 10 minutes to go before we have to, to give back the floor. But um, we had a question about valuation. So, uh, you know, this could be the topic of a, a whole workshop. But yes. do you have a few indications of you know, the principles of valuation? Uh, can you help an entrepreneur in the, in the chat who, who asked about, you know, sure. how do you set your valuation? Yeah, valuation is a tough is, is a tough question. As you say, we can spend quite a lot of time talking about it without having the right answer to it. Um, I've come to 
think that valuation is is very easy. It's a question of uh, dilution, and and very often that's what it is. It's a question of dilution, dilution. How do you say dilution for the entrepreneur? So. How much is the entrepreneur ready to open up uh, his, his capital to, towards investors, thinking that this is just the first stage and the second stage, usually they want to keep the majority as well, so you need to keep some margin. Uh, so the the difficulty of for valuation is that basically it's, it's, uh, it's three figures. It's how much do I need? How much do I accept to be diluted? And then what is my valuation? So the, the entry for me is how much do I need? Uh, because your valuation will come out later, but how much do I need to uh, last or to be able to grow my business, as I said, for about 18 months before I need to go back to the market or I'm profitable and I can actually finance myself. Uh, so at least 18 months. To do what? What do I need this money for? That's very important. Is it to really go to a next step, which means that when I'll come back to the market in 18 months, I can say, well, I've done this with this money. I've done, I've achieved that. And this is a major uh, step between, between 18 months ago and today. So how much do I need? Could be 100,000 euros, 500,000 euros, a million euros, a million five euros. It all depends on the project. And then, uh, sometimes I see uh, companies come with a valuation which is very high because they want too much money and the valuation is not right. So instead of arguing with the valuation, we start to, uh, to discuss the, 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 the use of how much money they use, uh, they, they really need. And, and usually that's how we, we get towards a right evaluation uh, because we manage that the amount of money they are raising is not, is not exactly the same. One thing which is very important is, uh, I don't know every country, but I know in quite a lot of European countries, when you raise capital, you actually are able then next to it to raise and uh, not diluting finances like debt or, and that's very important. So you need to re, uh, you, uh, address all kinds of financing, not just equity financing, but also what else you can get next to it so that together with your equity and with uh, the other kind of financing you can get, uh, then you get to the amount you need. So valuation, tough, tough, uh, uh, very difficult subject, but I usually address it through how much do you need? And then we we'll usually get to a, to a reasonable level. Thank you, France. Um, I, I think probably we'll have to take a last question, but, which is interesting because it's the other side of the coin. It's really what you've been developing in, in France. How do you become investor ready when you want to start investing in startups as a woman? How do you do it? Um, maybe, there, join a, maybe join a group first. Exactly. <laughs> I, well, you have two ways of investing, angel investing. You can invest by yourself, and uh, but then it means you need to have a seriously great deal flow and, and time to look at it. Or you can join a group, as you say. Why are we in a group of investors? Well, first of all, because we like each other and we like being together, but that's not the key issue, the key point. The key point is that we have a great sourcing because we receive 600, 700, 800, I don't know how much, I'm sure in B Angels, you receive a lot of, of projects as well. Uh, so we have a lot of opportunities to look at, but we also put together uh, competencies that are very different. And in order to be an angel investor, you don't need to be uh, financially literate or you don't need to be, uh, you can't have all the expertise anyway. So some of us are financially literate, some others are, are very good expertise in communication, otherwise are very good expertise in uh, data or intelligent, artificial intelligence, whatever. And it's by bringing all these competencies together that we can look at a project and, and be, uh, and confront our, uh, our uh, point of views and that's really interesting. So if you are not an angel investor and you, you are looking into that, what we do in uh, Fan Business Angels, but I think most business angel network do that is, first of all, we have a, a, form, a formation, a, a training. training, sorry, uh, two days where we cover all the aspects of angel investing. It Obviously, it's not a, a, a way to make sure that you will do great investments, but it's definitely useful. So first training, and then just 
listen to pitches, see a lot of companies, work with on due diligence with other investors that are uh, uh, much more experienced. And, you know, you like it because it's really fun and uh, learn a lot. And that's how you become an angel investor. Thank you so much, Florence. I think uh, given the time, uh, I think we better wrap up. Um, I have seen some questions about your presentation. I think you're, you're, you're fine with sharing the presentation. So I'll, I will probably let it to the organizers to share your presentation, if that's okay, with your contact details mm -hmm. so that people can reach out to you. Um, thank you so much, Florence, for, for this workshop. Really interesting. And um, for those of you who are interested in this topic, we are going to continue the conversation in another workshop in a couple of minutes with Mary Makina. We are going to discuss how to get the most out of your investors. So it's going to be a very nice uh, follow-up. Thank you all for participating uh, this afternoon. I hope you enjoyed this workshop. And uh, Florence, thank you again uh, for your insights and sharing your experience today. And I wish you all a good afternoon. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for attending. I'm sorry, I probably didn't answer all the questions because it's difficult to talk and read at the same time. But Claire, you did a great job. So thank you for uh, uh, the uh, animation. And uh, uh, please don't hesitate to contact me if you have uh, any questions. Uh, I'll try to answer. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye. Thank you.